In this video, we're going to show how to take a relatively normal flat image like you can see on the screen there and give it a little bit of cinematic capaz to make it all stand out and look a little bit better with the use of depth of field. Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco. I hope you're doing well. Over here, we do Daz 3D tutorial videos so that you can get the most out of your own renders and this week what we're doing with this video as the intro showed uh, is we're going to start looking at uh, depth of field uh, we're going to look at why we use it and then of course we're going to look at how to use it and to get the most out of it as you can see over in the viewport we've got our model all suited and booted as she is standing in this really dusty derelict type of corridor that she's in now, I see a lot of people uh, doing a lot of images and they don't use depth of field. And I think people at times struggle to understand the reasons as to why we should use depth of field. Firstly, it just looks cool. Let's face it. Images with depth of field look a lot better than just flat images with, with no depth of field to them. But uh, beyond that, uh, there's two other reasons and there's technical reasons why we do it. Uh, first of all, it's more realistic. If you take a look and you look at a cup sitting on a desk, the cup is in focus, but if you look, well, obviously you don't look, but if, if you consider what's behind the cup in the rest of the room, it's out of focus. So when we use depth of field, it does add a certain amount of realism to our images that uh, seeing everything in perfect clarity without things out of focus doesn't actually grant us. And secondly, from an artistic perspective, what it does, it allows us to direct the gaze of our audience into the place that we want to see. So for instance, in the example uh, that we've got on screen here, we want our model, we want the audience to see our model. We're not interested in the background. There's nothing interesting going on over there. And we want the eyes of the audience to look at the model in the screen. And so that's the reason why we use depth of field. So how do we do depth of field then well the first thing that we need to do we need to use a dedicated camera we can't do depth of field with the perspective view which you can see that we're in up here so what i need to do is if i come around and position the perspective camera into the rough place where i want it to be uh, we'll say about there for now well, i'll probably fiddle about it you know between edits but there will do for now and what we need to do we need to come up to our menu up the top we need to do create and we need to come to new camera which you can see there and we give it a click and we get this little dialogue box crops up you've probably seen it a thousand times already and what we're going to do we're going to apply the active viewport transform so that it places the camera where our perspective view is currently located at and once we've selected that and we hit accept we create a camera now if we just zoom out a little bit with our perspective and spin around we can see the camera here where it is now <clears throat> if we then come in and we select camera and also make sure that it's selected in the scene tab and then on the, the lower tabs down here if we come down to cameras give it a click and make sure that the camera subheading is selected there then these are our controls for our well for our camera generally but for the depth of field we want to look at specifically the depth of field toggle the focal distance and the f-stop down there now, if we were to just take a look at the image with NVIDIA iRay Preview engaged, without any depth of field on the on the image or coming from the camera, things look a little bit weird. The background and her, it, it almost like looks like she's superimposed upon the, the background. And this is one of the reasons, like I said, why we, why we like to apply a depth of field. Now, when we do apply the depth of field, we can do it in three ways we can apply depth of field to the foreground so in this instance this would be the skull and the candle uh, we can apply it to the background which is everything behind our model or we can apply it to the bit in the middle which is the bit between the foreground and the background which in this case is just our model uh, and so what we're going to do we're just going to have a look at how to do each of those three things and apply depth of field in each of the different sections and see how they all come out and how they all look once they are done so what we've done here then, we've just come out of NVIDIA iRay mode and back into the perspective camera, as you can see, uh, just so that we can see our model side on, because this is the best way to position uh, things when we're setting up the depth of field. These lines you see here, these dotted lines, these are our camera, which is about here, just behind the UI over there. We don't need to see the camera just as long as we've got it selected 
in our scene tab so what we're going to do first we're going to set up the depth of field just to bring into uh focus the the skull and the, the the candle that we see here so everything behind that will be out of focus somewhat and the way we do that is simple first of all we turn on depth of field just like that now you won't see anything straight away because we have to apply the distance of where we're going to set it up and if we start to lower this number and just start to bring it down we can see this little window this little rectangular thing appears which you can see right there uh, the basic rule is anything that falls in between the middle of these two planes there's this front one with a cross in it and there's this back one with a cross in it that is where the the focus is going to be that's where our focal point is going to be when uh, we look through our camera so if we keep just bringing it down bringing it down until we're just on the front edge of the skull say now this green line that you see there that's basically the center of the the two planes so i've basically got it set it up at the front of the skull just about there so now if we take a look back through our camera and we go into nvidia iray mode again we end up with a nice image where the skull and the candle are in focus and everything behind them are out of focus plus we've applied depth of field just to the foreground which is exactly what we want so now what we'll do we'll apply it to our model and keep the foreground out of focus and the background out of focus also so what we're going to do we'll come back out of here we'll come back to the perspective view and what we're going to do this window that we get uh, the front pane and the back pane we're now just going to move it backwards to roughly where our model is so again that green line there is roughly the middle i know we're at a little bit of an angle here but uh, it's roughly the middle so that's more or less on the front of a nose okay so once again we'll come back to our camera and then back into i ray mode to see the results now this will be the most common use of depth of field that you'll do where the model is all in focus and everything else the background and anything that's in the foreground out of focus so this is probably your standard your standard depth of field that you'll do now there's one thing i just want to note while we are on this particular level of depth of field is could we make the foreground or the background even even more out of focus while keeping our main character and our main subject in focus well yes we can and the way that we do that is if we come into uh protection mode again and in the perspective view what we want to do is we want to narrow the gap between these two things or even widen it up if we want to put more things in focus and the way that we do that is by adjusting the f-stop that we can see down here if we were to lower the f-stop you can see that this uh, the two front and back panes are getting closer and closer together we're tightening the area of focus so that now the skull and the the candle for instance will be even more out of focus as will the background uh we'll just go down to that for now and we'll have another look at that uh just so you can see the effects of it and i'll put a little before and after up there possibly so as you can see we end up now with this really dramatic change that we've got where the background and the foreground are both really out of focus but we've maintained the depth of focus and the, the, the you know the area that we want our audience and our viewer to look at the model in real sharp focus uh right in the middle of the two of them so if you've not yet been using depth of field in your images now you've got no excuse not to do it it's very simple to do very easy uh, and it just makes your images look a whole lot better when you do by making your subjects and your models stand out from the background. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, please would you consider subscribing and clicking the little notification bell down below. Also give this video a quick like as it tells YouTube I'm a better YouTuber than what I actually am. And if you've got any comments, questions or just want to chat, drop them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.